our MEPI project is concentrated on training uh, health staff on how to deal with HIV-associated malignancies. We have three main aims, and the first aim is to train a few scientists in how to do HIV-associated malignancy surveillance. Uh, for this task, we are training two people at the master's project program at Johns Hopkins University of Papua University in Maryland. Uh, we chose two nurses to do an MPH at Johns Hopkins School of Public Health. When they finish, we hope they will help us to map out the HIV-associated malignancies in Malawi. The second aim is to train uh, pathologists to help in the management and diagnosis of HIV-associated malignancies. We are training two pathologists at the University of KwaZulu-Natal. Up to this time, Malawi has had three uh, pathologists, one retired, two in active service, one not so good at diagnostic ability, and only one competent one. So we, we thought that we should train two more pathologists, and we are fortunate to receive one who has just completed training from South Africa uh, in the last few months. So by the end of maybe we hope that we will have at least uh, five pathologists in country, which will be a huge increase from what we have right now. We are also training, uh, by the end of maybe we'll have trained five uh, histology and cytology technicians, technologists to help the pathologists in the diagnostic process. We have also embarked on training nurses, uh, pharmacists, pharmacy technicians on how to handle cytotoxic drugs uh, safely uh, and appropriately. Up to this time, we had we never had the training in this kind of stuff. They would handle drugs uh, without the protection for themselves and for the patients. So through the MEPI, we have trained close to 20 nurses, pharmacy technicians, and, uh, yeah. and other staff in how to handle cytotoxic drugs. We have also trained uh, physicians, clinical officers, on how to do biopsies of what we think are Kaposi sarcoma lesions safely. We established a palliative care a clinic at my hospital, in, at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Blantyre, Malawi. We have been looking after patients without trained staff. We have one doctor that has been trained at Makerere University in palliative care, but the nurses helping her were untrained. So through the maybe we have trained two nurses at certificate level, uh, on how to manage end of life and chronic diseases uh, appropriately. We have also uh, enrolled one nurse at a diploma level uh, in palliative care and one clinical officer uh, at a diploma level for in palliative care. We hope these two individuals, when they finish their diploma, they can go on to do a BSc in palliative care. So by the end of maybe we will have at least five people trained in how to, to look after our end of life and chronic diseases in Malawi. We did not have a laboratory at Queen Elizabeth Hospital uh, to do histology. The laboratory that was doing histology is a laboratory that we use to train students. It is a, it is away from the hospital and the doctors uh, doing the service have been in most cases reluctant to provide service in time and appropriately. So through the MEPI we have created a laboratory at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. We have procured equipment. 
and we have engaged a retired pathologist to provide service to the patients so that they can get timely results to manage patients. The biggest challenge has been the issue of placing people in training institutions. Uh, as you must have heard from my introductory remarks, most of the training has to be done outside Malawi. So South Africa, Makerere, the US, and other places. Uh, how the registration of people with the, the Health Professional Council of South Africa for them to engage in training has been the biggest hurdle that we have faced. For example, the pathology students that are at uh, University of KwaZulu-Natal sent in their applications in August last year. By March this year, they were not yet registered. We had to send them unregistered to KwaZulu-Natal to pursue registration while there. The cytology and the histology technologies that we would want to train, only one has managed to register and is gone. The other two that are supposed to have gone have not yet gone. We are still chasing the registration process. So this has been our biggest uh, challenge. I am a physician and as a physician I, I rely uh, a lot uh, on pathological services for me to manage my patients well. The greatest excitement has been to bring back the retired pathologist into service to help uh, improve diagnostic services uh, at my hospital as well as at our sister hospital at, at, uh, at Kamu Central Hospital in Nilongwe because it's going to provide service to both hospitals. So that has been my greatest uh, uh, excitement in, in this whole process. Pathological services were neglected, especially anatomical pathology services were neglected. Now the fact that we advertised uh, for, uh, for students to undertake pathology training through the MEPI, we found, we saw the ministry also getting interested and through the Global Fund, they also provide scholarships for two more pathology students for, to be trained in South Africa. And uh, only this morning before I came here, I was, read, I was reading through my emails, and one more student is interested to do pathology services, and uh, I have to find where to get resources to train her, but she's she just wrote to me that she is interested to do pathology. And she's not the only one I have had contacts from other students wanting to do pathology. Now, it seems to have a snowboarding effect. The fact that we introduced some students to, to the training of pathology, many more seem to be interested to do so. So this is very exciting for me. So in 10 years, uh, we'll, we'll move from three pathologies probably to 10 or 11 pathologies for the country. The library is, is critical uh, uh, in, in any training as a source of information for the trainees and for the trainers uh, and the like. And uh, uh, these days the library uh, a virtual library is, is what we'll be looking for so that uh, we can access information from our desks instead of going to the physical building to, to get resources from there. So what I didn't say actually in my introductory remarks is that we within the MEPI we have put in some money for curriculum development for uh, training of pathologists at a uh, postgraduate level. Uh, my hope is that once the curriculum is set, uh, then the people we are training will become a nucleus for training of pathologists locally in Malawi. And we hope we will have resources for pathologists from South Africa to come and accredit our laboratory for the training of pathologists. Now the library will be critical when we start training our own pathologists to make sure that the the trainees and the teachers can get up-to-date resources for the training and for the learning.
we got some resources from the Scottish government, ah. which brought us a big server to keep such kind of resources so that they can ah. be available on intranet. My passion for educating uh, uh, health workers basically stems from the fact that uh, I saw it uh, as a, a 19 year old uh, when my, my brother was suffering from kidney disease and there was no help locally in Malawi uh, to, to manage him. He had to be airlifted to South Africa for uh, care. That's when I developed the passion for, for looking after people. When I trained in Nairobi and returned to Malawi, there were only two of us junior doctors. And I thought it was not appropriate that we could uh, train two people a year for a country that at that time had a population of 8 million. Uh, and that's why I joined the medical school to be part of uh, a team of people that would have a multiplier effect so that we can clone ourselves into more uh, of ourselves. So yes, I am passionate about training people, not only doctors, training of nurses, training of laboratory technologists, uh, and, 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 and any other health cadres. And when I was dean, I introduced in the College of Medicine a physiotherapy program. I also introduced uh, a health management program I, I, I improved the laboratory technology program uh, and also undertook a review of our uh, MD program. So I, 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 I have been passionate about training uh, not only physicians but all cadres of staff because we work as a team. Uh, without a team, a physician is useless. Uh, without a team, a nurse is useless. So we, we have to recognize that we can only be effective if we work in teams. So I am not trained as a, an educationist myself. I, have, I don't have any educational qualification, but I have learned on the job how to, to be an educator. Maybe has a, taught me how to network better. Uh, I'm, I'm sending people in many, many places, and that has helped me to network people, to network better. But it has also taught me how to persevere. Uh, if you don't get a response, keep on banging on the door. So that has taught me perseverance. I was not a very patient person. I'm a goal-oriented person. And if uh, things don't work out within a certain time frame, I get very frustrated. But maybe it has taught me to be a little bit more patient to, to get the results that I want. But it has also taught me that if, we, if you provide opportunities, people are there to get to grab the opportunities. Because previously we never thought people were interested in pathology training. But as I said earlier, there's a multiplier effect. We can see people are hungry to get into pathology training. Yes, when they, <clears throat> because of the difficulties I'm having to register people, uh, in South Africa, I, I have had to contact other peers from Zambia and from Nairobi to see whether their institutions train these cadres. Um, I'm still waiting to get a response from, not from the PIs, but from the people that do the training. For us uh, in Malawi, ours is a pilot project, but we are very thankful to NIH that they, uh, although we did not get the programmatic award, they still thought it was useful for our pilot project to go forward. Uh, yesterday I was uh, talking to one of the CDC people and he was saying how and when we will get a programmatic award because they think what we are doing is very exciting and they thought it could uh, be a a trigger for better things to come. So we will wait and see.